nature is everywhere, taking advantage of nature just at the right moment, I found these pods on a tree late summer at a bead show. At the time I knew I had to have them but wasn't really sure what I was going to do with them. Then I decided to take one of the pods off the branch, figure out how they really were assembled, what was possible, and in taking it apart, I came up with three different leaves. And you can see the seeds are inside, so I took the seeds off, and I'll save those for another day and figure out what I want to do with them then. But for now, we're going to put those aside and just work with the leaves. The leaves are painted with paste and turned into fine silver leaves, which we then incorporate into the necklace that you see here. And combine the pod leaves with the chain and that it combines the toggle that we made in the toggle section. So put all that together and you'll have a design just like that. Let's get to the painting. The leaves are ready to go just as I have them here. They're dry and ready to receive whatever we're going to do with them. And I'm going to paint not a thick layer, um, but a, a good coating onto either side, doesn't matter which one you work with first, the top or the bottom. I tend to, because the leaf naturally falls so the top is up, I usually paint the top first. You want to get the edges, go all the way around, get all the surfaces. The first, first and second coats sometimes are a little bit persnickety, requiring a little bit of extra care. So just plan to take your time. And I do tend to work with all three at the same time, well, one after the other after the other, let the first coat dry. So I'll put this one, I don't want anything too thick, and I'm taking a little bit off from the center where it seemed to gather. Make sure I have a good coating. And I'm gonna set this aside. Clean off my paintbrush, and then I would start my second leaf. And here I have one leaf with one coat already in place, and now I'll do the underside. So once the top coat is dry, we'll paint underneath. And I have found with this particular pod, the underside tends to not receive the first layer very well. So just take your time, make sure you cover it in all the areas. And then if you find it, it pulls away as it starts to cover, you'll actually probably see it because it happens almost every leaf. Just keep going and then set it aside. We're going to do this seven times on each side, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to fill in any areas that seem to reject the clay the first time around. Okay, so we've got our second side coated and we're going to set that aside to dry. And the drying time varies depending on the humidity in your room depending on if I'm working on this leaf in the winter or in the summer, even that in itself changes things. I do not force the drying. I find these prefer to air dry and they don't take too long, but again, really it depends on the humidity in your area. So now I have both sides coated on this leaf. And as I mentioned, you can see where it pulled, pulled away. This coat will cover that. Something else that you may notice when you add the second coat, it may pull some of the first coat away. And as I mentioned, we're going to do this seven times. So any area that you find seems to be a little lighter in coverage, just pay attention to that and add a little extra in that spot. There, now I've started my second coat on this. I'll let this dry, then paint the top. and. I will do it seven times on each side for each leaf. So I've got a really nice coating. And if you find any areas that need to have a little bit more clay added, this would be a great time to do that. Check the sides, make sure the seams are all meeting up. And then we'll make sure that last coat is dry and then we'll make it ready for adding loops. All right, so now it's time to refine.
So the leaves are coated, the paste is dry, and they are ready for refining. So we're going to go through the process of cleaning these up. And this is also a good opportunity to make sure that the paste has completely covered the leaf. But to start, we're going to use the polishing papers. And the brush and the paste has given me a nice texture. I mean, at this point, unfortunately, I've made the pod texture kind of buried. So I'm taking advantage of the natural texture that's come about through painting. So I don't want to lose that because this is really a more organic design. And it's nice to have a little bit of a more natural element. So we'll go through the whole leaf, make sure the edges are smooth, nothing's too sharp, especially that point. Sometimes um, I'll even break that point off just because it does get a little sharp. But then if you do decide to do that, just make sure you coat that end with some more paste and then let that dry. Now, of course, the underside doesn't need to be done to perfection. However, it's your jewelry, so I would recommend that you take the time and do both sides equally so that no matter who looks at it and when you look at it, both sides are beautiful. So take that all the way through all the levels of progression of the polishing papers, and then it's ready for adding the coil. But first we need to make the coil. So I have a nice clean work surface, no conditioners on here, so it's not treated for nonstick, it's just natural. And I'm going to take a small pad of clay. Okay. And sometimes if the clay feels a little sticky, I'll just kind of squish it a little bit and get it into, and you'll, you'll learn what that means. Um, and you'll learn really fast because if you put this down and it starts dragging on the work surface, then you know it's a little too sticky. And then just squish it a little and it dries up the surface of the clay just enough so you can do what you need to do. And that is creating a coil. First create a snake. And I'm using the bead roller, pressing down. I'm not pressing down to flatten the rope. Oops. I'm pressing down just to glide it, guide it across the surface, and create a nice even rope. There we go. And then from there, I'll take the coil and, oh, broke that end off. Just anchor it and turn. And you want to get the coil as straight up and down as you can make it. Because as you cut this apart, your rings will be angular if they're not done straight at this part. I'll anchor that little end there. There we go. And I'll set it aside to dry. And then once it's dry, we'll add it to the pendant leaves and be good to go. The coil is ready to be made into loops for our pendant. So I'm going to remove the coil from the straw and then, oh, there we go, cut off a couple of rings for this pendant. Just gonna press right through those different rings and then what I'm going to do is where the overlap is, I'm going to just trim that off and trying to get the lower third. So I'm left with the upper two thirds. And sometimes they break at a point where it's a little too small. So I like to make a few of them so that for each leaf, because they're a little bit different, I have a few to work with. And then my leaf is refined and ready to go some glasses and so what I'll do here is add a little bit of water just to kind of wake up the clay a little bit get the area where this is headed ready okay and I'll add a little bit of paste sometimes if there's too much water the the paste will just slide right off so just 
give yourself a little bit of time. That worked out. Okay, so it's ready. And what's up next is to refine the feet. That's a great loop. Okay, so I'm going to hold the loop in the tweezers and hold the sanding board. And what I want to do is even out the feet as well as make them as broad as I can so I get enough clay material on them for sticking. So that's ready to go. And then I will dip this into the paste, get a nice coating on those ends, and then transfer it, transfer it to the area where I've already put paste there we go. Get that nice and straight. And put a little bit of downward pressure. Pressure always helps. It's one of the, part of the equation. Water, paste, pressure. And that really helps make that connection. And then we'll set it aside to dry. There we go. Set that aside. out of the way. And here we have our leaf that's already refined and the loop is already in place and dry. So to clean up that area, because the rest of the leaf is already in order, all we have to do is focus on the area where we added some fresh clay. So I'll just take the polishing papers and neaten up any of the excess that's kind of oozed out from when I put the two parts together. You don't want to rem remove the parts you need, but the excess you don't have to have there just for a nice finish. And of course, at this point, you'd also check for gaps. If you have any gaps, you'll want to take the paste and fill in those gaps, let it dry, and then come back to refining. Or if you accidentally snap off the loop in this process, just start over, put the loop back in paste, put some paste back on the leaf, and join them back together and start the refining process once it's dry. Okay, so we'll move through all those progressions just like we did before, and then we'll clean up this hole. Now you don't wanna remove too much material from the top of the leaf because eventually you'll work through some of the clay you added, but you do wanna make sure that your opening is going to support hanging this later um, using a jump ring. So you wanna make sure your opening can accommodate that. Use a paintbrush to remove the excess that you've sanded off so it's not going into the kiln. It shouldn't fire in place, but just to be safe, as well as so that you can capture the dust, just brush it off onto your work surface and then, of course, scoop that into the container that you started that matches the clay that we're using. So this piece is ready to go into the kiln and I'd like to cover how to put that into the kiln next. The piece is dry and ready for firing. For this piece, I'm going to place it in the kiln on the kiln shelf with a piece of fiber blanket underneath. And what I would like to do to preserve all of the texture that's on here is put that face down so that as gravity kind of takes over, it's cushioned. And um, because I'm going to break off a small piece, I'm going to recommend that you wear a dust mask as well as as soon as you're done working with the fiber blanket, wash your hands. So I'm going to take a small piece and this is really just extra precaution. You really don't need to do it, but you want to Try to feed a little piece of fiber blanket into the opening and just support that angle. I'll take another little piece and just support that structure. Just like that. And should anything in the kiln just get too molten-y, um, it'll just offer that support until the metal's centered properly. So, from there, you'll fire it in the kiln and then let it cool to room temperature. Once it's cool to room temperature, for a satin finish, you can use the steel wire brush and just 
burnish the surface. There we go. And just continue through the entire piece. And the, the brush really just helps get into all of the crevices. There are additional finishing techniques in the, fin in the uh, fundamentals section. And as you can see in the finished design, I've taken the leaves through a tumble polish. And that really compresses the metal, brings up a really beautiful shine. And then from there, you could also add a patina and really kind of give it an aged look. Lots of options. Check out the fundamental section and combine this piece with the toggle from the toggle project and you're good to go.